In quantum mechanics, we deal with systems composed of particles, like electrons or photons. Each particle has its own set of quantum states, like its position, momentum and spin. But when we have multiple identical particles, things can get a little bit more complicated. That's where the Fox space comes into play. To explain how a Fox space is constructed from single particle Hilbert spaces, we take a look at two bosonic particles in an infinite potential well. In the well we put two particles which are each initially described by wave functions Psi1 and Psi2, here both seen in the position basis. These wave functions are each elements of the infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces H1 and H2, which in this case are just the same spaces H. How should we now go about constructing a wave function that contains the position information of both particles? Well, the idea is to simply combine these two Hilbert spaces into a Hilbert space with twice the dimensionality, which is still infinity of course. To see what this looks like in the position basis, we combine the two one-dimensional lines of position into a two-dimensional grid like this, and the wave function is now described in this higher dimensional space. We can still use the one-particle operators to for example determine the probability of finding particle 1 at position x, and use these one-particle operators to create useful multi-particle operators, such as the average position of the particles in the box. This might seem extremely simple, but we have one catch. Because the two wave functions describe particles of the exact same type, we cannot tell the difference between particle 1 and 2 anymore inside the well. This means that our probability of finding particle 1 at position x should be equal to the probability of finding particle 2 at position x. To obtain this symmetry, we can go through the process of symmetrizing our new two-particle wave function. Mathematically, this is very easily done. Writing our two-particle wave function as the combination of both one-particle wave functions, to obtain a symmetry between the two particles, we simply add the two wave functions again, but now with the two particles interchanged. As you can see, our probability function on the left changes as we symmetrize the wave function, taking into account that the wave function should be symmetric under particle exchange. This construction of constructing a two-particle wave function from two one-particle wave functions can of course be generalized to any number of identical bosonic particles. To do this, note that the only thing we did is take two vectors from Hilbert space H, then multiply them to form a vector that lies in the tensor product of H with itself. We can extend this to n particles, where we just multiply the original Hilbert space with itself n times. We then symmetrize these spaces, denoted by writing S plus of the combination of Hilbert spaces, and to form the entire Fox space, we simply add all these symmetrized n particle Hilbert spaces with one another via the tensor sum. We thus arrive at the mathematical formulation of a Fox space you saw in the beginning of this video. A vector can be thought of as having a basis in all these tensor products of the original Hilbert space, and it will point in each of these subspaces in some directions, if any. We have now been talking about identical bosonic particles, but what about fermionic particles? We know from bosonic particles that they can occupy the same quantum state without a problem, but for fermionic particles this is not the case. Due to Pauli's exclusion principle, no two fermions can occupy the same quantum state at the same time. To realize this in a multiparticle wave function, the only thing we need to require is that the wave function is anti-symmetric with respect to switching two of its particles. To see why this is the case, let's write down the requirement for a two-particle wave function. Should particle 1 be at position x1 and particle 2 be at position x2, we can write down the following equality. Now notice what happens if we assume both particles to be at position x. We get that the wave function is equal to its negation, which means that the wave function must be zero. In other words, the probability that we find the two particles at exactly the same position is zero. Thus, instead of symmetrizing our multi-particle wave function, we can anti-symmetrize it in the following way. We denote this as the S minus of the product of Hilbert spaces H. Looking again at the two one-particle wave functions we saw in the bosonic visualization, observe how we can make a grid of the anti-symmetrized two-particle wave function using the expression below. It looks similar to the bosonic wave function, only here we find the highest probability of observing the two particles at opposite positions inside the well. Notice also how the line x1 equals x2 gives a vanishing wave function squared in this graph. 
With this, our Fox space is constructed. We simply change the plus in our previous equation into a new, which can be plus or minus denoting a set of bosonic or fermionic particles respectively. Before finishing this video, I want to talk about how the notion of quantum entanglement is derived from the Fox space formulation. To make this idea more tangible, let's consider two spin 1 bosonic particles, which can both have a spin eigenvalue along the z-axis of plus 1, minus 1 or 0, or a superposition of these three. We can create a two particle wave function from the one particle wave functions as seen before. Say the first particle is in the following superposition of states, and the second particle is in the other superposition. We can combine their two one particle wave functions into a two particle wave function of the following form. I chose our original states such that their product is immediately symmetric under exchanging particles 1 and 2. And we can see this mathematically by observing that the two cross terms both have the same factor ABC in front. This means we don't have to go through the process of symmetrization anymore, and on top of that, we can write the two particle wave function as a tensor product of the original two wave functions Psi1 and Psi2. In general, it may sometimes be possible to reconstruct the two individual wave functions from the two particle wave function in this way. However, this is not always the case. To give an example, consider the following symmetric spin state. There is no way in which we can write this wave function as a tensor product of two one particle wave functions, which means that the two particles are indeed entangled with one another. In other words, a measurement of one particle leads to the information about the other particle. In this example, consider measuring the spin along the z-axis of particle 1, which turns out to have eigenvalue of plus 1. This means that the other particle must now also be observed to have spin eigenvalue plus 1. In a disentangled state we would now still have no knowledge about the other particle, but due to their entanglement we do. Visually we have already seen an example of an entangled and a disentangled state. Before symmetrizing our bosonic 2 particle wave function we constructed a 2 particle wave function that was simply a multiplication of the two 1 particle wave functions. On the left we see their constructed wave function in the position basis. These states are disentangled since a measurement of the position of either particle is independent of our knowledge about the position of the other particle, visually observed as a symmetry in a translation along the position coordinates. On the right side we see what happens when we symmetrize the wave function. Here the translational symmetry is removed and indeed the particles are entangled. The probability density function of observing the second particle changes as we observe the first particle. And that's all there is to it. By either symmetrically or anti-symmetrically gluing Hilbert spaces to one another, we are able to construct our Hilbert space for any number of particles from our original one particle wave functions. This concept is very useful for quantum systems concerning multiple particles at once. A concept that is used all over in quantum field theory, condensed matter physics, particle physics and other fields of physics and chemistry as well. For now thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon in another video.